what's beautiful in, right away from this is it's, it's at a level that kids, um, folks who might have some mobility challenges, can 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 roll up to or be brought to and run right inside. Yeah. And see and see the hive from from the window here. I think that's that's. And I have a special guest, Greg Burns. Hi guys. Uh, Greg uh, decided to eat come on the snowiest day in April to be his beehive of. I brought some of the snow down from Ohio for you. Oh, that's what it is. Sharing means caring, right? Oh. There we go. Now I understand what's going on. <laughs> but uh, uh, Greg said, hey, I've got an idea for a horizontal hive. I'd like to try it. And uh, I've got this design. And so we, we talked a little bit, and this is what we come up with. So, uh, Greg, uh, if you don't mind, can you uh, explain to us a little bit about your decal right here? Yeah, so uh, my wife and I, we have seven kids. And uh, in, the, in the last I don't know, seven or eight years or so, we've tried to get back to what's important in life, get back to our roots, get back to the simple ways, uh, kind of uh, revive some of the old time ways, the old practices of living, surviving, raising a family. Um, and so um, our, that's what, exactly what our logo means to us. There's a lot of things um, kind of going on. Our, um, uh, our genetics are uh, Norse, Scotch, Irish. So there's a lot of things going on there, right? <laughs> Um, but we also, um, we're, we're, we're a little superstitious, definitely symbolic mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to a lot of things in life. Uh, first and, f and foremost, we have the tree of life. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting about the tree of life is sometimes we only focus on what's above ground. That's right. That's all that we think that we can see. Mm -hmm. um, but there is so much going on below the soil, all the interconnections, um, the root systems, the beneficial microbes, the bacteria, everything that actually makes, everything that we see exist. It's going on because the, the, the groundwork is literally laid. caved, but laid below. Yeah, that's just like Jesus Christ. You know, he yeah. he's he's our our roots. He's he's our groundwork. You know, yep. he keeps us. We're stable if we're planted yeah. in him. You know? That's right. We're, we've got we're, we're in solid, stable ground. Yeah. Um, and it's a way for us to recognize that even as we grow and move forward. Um, with with this tree, you'll notice why is all this same fruits and apples, you know, on this tree, and there's no leaves. Well, as you know, you know a tree by its fruit. That's right. So as we see these apples here, there's uh, my wife and I, like I said, we have seven kids. There's one for me and my wife and each of the kids um, as a way to kind of help us to constantly be reminded that that's what we want. We don't want our, our, our name. We don't want, we're not trying to leave a, a treasure of gold here on earth, things like that. We we are we just want this tree to be known by its so that's what we're kind of doing, um, even out of season. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that that kind of speaks to um, a mindset of of appreciating that we're blessed and that it's a it's a life of abundance right. if if you choose to look at it that way. Right. Um. So that's kind of what that signifies. Um. You know, we're we are superstitious hillbillies at heart, um, in a good way. Mm -hmm. Um. And so you'll see the red bird, the cardinal. The cardinal. Yeah. And the cardinal for us, whenever we see a cardinal at home. Um, it's, it's as though a loved one who's passed is just coming in to look in on us, to wow. check in. Okay. A lot of times we see things like that when we're about to make a decision in life or we're thinking about something impactful. Sometimes we just see them all show up, um, or one, or, 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 or several, and it's kind of like this God's little way of just showing us that little sign, that little thing. At least that's how we recognize it, um, and so that's kind of important. So this being the tree of life, you know, there's a lot of things that are um, uh, and important about that, but you know, above as it is below, there's there's so much. Everything is always connected. Um, it's not just um, a, a single branch that has no purpose, no meaning. Yeah. The roots tie everything um, together. But what's what I think what's interesting about this tree of life is also an apple tree. Yeah. And so a lot of the things that we do on the farm, uh, grafting queens, um, we're always trying to. Um, take the, uh, the, the the gifts and the blessings that we have and see if we can't do something to then multiply those blessings for other folks too. Right. So in this way, we, at home, we do a lot of apple grafting. Yeah. Where we'll graft, graft different types of apples to the same tree yep. and, and try to keep and preserve a lot of old apples from antiquity alive on the farm right. because we've learned that skill. In this case, we've bees <laughs> have been grafted to our family they, tree. Right. We're, we're first generation beekeepers. It's, it's you know, there, there there's, has been beekeepers generations past, but no one has taught us the farming. No one has taught us apple grafting. No one has taught us beekeeping. 
it's been the love and that, that, that desire in our heart to do it. And we just open ourselves up and we take that step forward knowing that we don't know anything. Right. And we're actually learning these things right alongside our kids. Right. And so that's, um, in, in an essence, that's kind of what um, this whole thing means. Um, and, you know, God has given us the perfect landscape to learn from. Right. If we just step back a second and just look at what's out here, Rather than trying to work against nature, we try to, to work with it as much as we possibly can right. and, and look at everything that's going on here. So if we see it in an area where we have crab apples growing and wild pears and wild cherries and, and wild blackberries, mm -hmm. well, we might be able to just put in things like an apple variety that we want or a pear because they're already growing here in this soil, in this context. Right. So it's just a way that we can, with beekeeping, animal husbandry, Raising a garden, raising an orchard is a way that we can kind of tie everything in together as much as we possibly can to work um, within nature's image. And I think God gives us the perfect landscape to kind of look at as an example. Yep, that's right. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's you know, when you said it had meaning, I, I knew this had to have a lot of meaning to it. Yeah. But now that you've explained it, it's it's really intense. You, you guys have put a lot of thought in your logo. And uh, that's, that's really important. And uh, you also... Your slogan here is uh, "Be the Lighthouse," right? And, and I, I love that slogan because you know, in our lives, you know, we, in Christian lives, we, we need to be the lighthouse for God. Uh, in our beekeeping, we need to be the lighthouse. We need to teach the people what we feel is the, the right way to keep bees. And, and and don't get me wrong, we we all make mistakes, right? But we can learn from those and and be better. And we can be the lighthouse for other people. And that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't stop on Sunday or Wednesday or Friday or whenever your service or meeting is. That's right. You know, there, there's, uh, there's opportunities to, to, to shine the light. We, we are not the, the light. We're just a reflection right. of the lighthouse. We're just that lighthouse reflecting that. Yeah. And, I, you know, you've maybe heard me say it before, but there's been times in my life, yours as well, where we have been that ship out on that rough sea. It's been pitch black in a storm, and we have no idea where we're at, where we're going. Yeah. And all of a sudden, somebody is a lighthouse to us. Right. And we can now see either a safe harbor, and we can see those rocks we're about to crash on. Yep. We can adjust our course, and because of that, it puts us into a place mm -hmm. where now we can be a lighthouse for somebody else. Right. And there's been so many folks in our life just like that, that that's something that we just try to, to, to take to heart, to just be the lighthouse. Yep. To Rather than complain about situations or things going on in this world, rather than complain and make movements and motions in that way. We actually try to be the change that we want to see That's in this right. world just by being an example. That's right. Not not with pride or ego, just expressions and your actions right. speak far louder than words. Absolutely. And then when we are operating under that core of being a lighthouse, mm -hmm. I think that helps to kind of perspective, at least for us. Right. Right. And, and uh, Greg, if you don't mind, can you explain them the design because you know Greg's, Greg's had a pretty cool design here and, and for a, a back year, backyard beekeeper uh, you know going in our fourth year here and, and I see this design it's kind of like okay this would work good on my farm I don't I'm not gonna be grafting a lot of queens uh, but you know it it just feels the need of curiosity hey I want to try something new so so explain to me yeah your design I, I think I think this this will call us the lighthouse hive. that's what we decided when, yep. when we thought about what can be done with the horizontal hive? The first person I thought is, I got, we got to get Ricky involved and have him build it. And when I say Ricky, get his lovely wife to do all this beautiful artwork. Because I mean, you're great, you're handy. This well, is an excellent hive. But I mean, yeah, look at this. That's this. Yeah. The work here is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> that is, that's beautiful. When we're talking about a lighthouse hive. We're trying to figure out, okay, can we put something together? That does on the farm you guys know yeah you know uh, two is one one is none three is for me I like to have things that have several different purposes right right so I, while it's great that we have a hive that does a one it's you know sure it's a brew it's honey it's a one kind of a thing yeah with this I'm really excited to show folks what can actually be done with this because we can take one colony make splits in it make queens in it yeah. This, this can actually be a colony that no matter if you're a backyard beekeeper or even a sideliner, it has a lot of value to yeah. because everything is all in one unit. Yeah. Um, and we can have the opportunity to also, where this is going to be special, um, and where we have this in mind is in our learning yard at, at Nature's Image Farm to go to show folks, here's how you can raise a colony, here's how you can split it, here's how you can make one, two, or three queens 
all in the same box. Yeah. In case you want to grow your backyard, um, your sideline, um, or if you just want to create a couple extra queens so you can be a lighthouse to somebody else. That's if right. their colony crashes and they need a queen or they need a split, right. you're already set and ready to go. Boom. Right. Now you can give to somebody else right here all in the same unit. Yeah. Um, can we crack it open and show them what's inside? Yeah, we can crack it open. You know, some of the other fun things about the horizontal hive is, you know, again, this is not my design. This is Greg's design. He took the horizontal and he made it his own. And that's why I think it's a lot of fun is for people to call me up and say, hey, Rick, can you try this? And it's like, oh, hey, let's try that and see how that works. So, you know, to me, the horizontal is wide open to do a lot of fun things with right now. So. What's beautiful in, right away from this is it's, it's at a level that kids, um, folks who might have some mobility challenges can, can, can roll up to or be brought to and up right inside yeah. and, see, and see the hive from, from the window here. I think that's, that's beautiful. That is just absolutely just an amazing feature. Um, it gives you so many opportunities to just quickly peek in without doing any kind of disruptions, especially with folks if they're a little bit shy yeah. or timid yeah. or they're anxious around bees, it gives them a chance to kind of just see, see and hear and maybe even feel that. Oh yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. And you know, you get a little three or four year old and, and you don't, yeah. you know, you don't, you want them to see what's going inside that hive, right? right. But, but, uh, cause it, you don't want to split that hive open without bee suit. It's just a little easier for them to come up and just look inside. Exactly. Know? It's cool because we can run, what, you can run almost 20 frames in here if you yep, want to. That is correct. Right. Yep. But yep. then you have these, you have the, the divider boards in here yep. where you can actually, if you wanted to, you could have four splits. Yep. Immediately, at, at a minimum, you could have a 10 frame economy that's growing into 20, split it out and make four splits, add queen cells that might be forming on these frames yep. and pull them out, make those splits, yep. and then on the other side, you have entrance dials. Yep. We can keep them ventilated, but we can also shut them down for a period of time to where maybe they want to home in yep. a little bit more to these as we make those splits. Yep. If we want to, if they're getting light on feet, you can drop a quart jar yep. right, on right on top of there to keep them fed. The really cool thing I'm looking forward to yeah. is taking our taking our, our one of our favorite breeder queens, uh -huh. the queens that we that from the, the the genetics that we got from from Bob Benny, which has newer carny and Caucasians. Asians. We yeah. brought those home from that Sue Co uh, Sue Kobe stock. Mm -hmm. Brought those home and then bred those with all of the bees that have survived my poor beekeeping <laughs> over all the years. <laughs> And we blended those two together. together. You know, it's hey, know how you feel. it happens. Yeah, I'll be the first person to say I have killed a lot of bees over time. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm, the goal is to do better every single That's year. That's right, 100. You know, learn from it. Yeah. So, so now we've taken, we've made this Northern Appalachian mutt bee. Yeah. And they are just, they're, they're awesome. Right. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. A lot of folks are um, enjoying them, but now we can take those beautiful, beautiful genetics in this situation and show people here. Right. Here's what this queen is doing. Here's what this colony. Put the book you're doing right but now we can do a lot of things um, i'm looking forward to taking some videos in the future we're showing exactly what that is but there is no reason why you cannot turn this in um, to a self-starter yeah a self-finisher oh yeah uh, a, a queen timing box yep. um, because we have separate entrances back here on the side through dials yep. so if we did want to do if you, if you want to go ahead and split the queen off yeah to another side and then let all the bees and put a solid divider in between. Yeah. So this colony is now queenless. Yeah. We can let all the bees that are on the queen side come back, fly back out, and go to the original location. Right. Now they're gonna think they're queenless. All right. So now right here in this box we have our queen. We could put a we could we could easily take another one of these yeah. and put it on there to put a um, uh, a screen a, a screen divider between yep. it, like a double screen right. board between yep. the two. Yep. Once they realize that they're queenless. We can we now have a, uh, opportunities to create little timing sections in here where yeah. you can put one the front the queen in one frame, right in between here as a timing box. Come back three days later, pull that out, and that, now here's our grafting material. Mm -hmm. We go to town grafting from that queen, right? Now we can put those grafts on this side, which already think that they're queenless. Right. Let them draw the cells out. Mm -hmm. From there, there's lots of options. We can let them go to town and just take four cells off and and boom, feed these one, two, three, four. We can take those off, put them in an incubator, come back later. I'm so excited. As you can tell, my mind is going <laughs> so many places. To go and yeah. Because this is this is this is the first time that I've seen something that can bridge. This can meet you where you're at. Right. 
if this is your first year of beekeeping, your second year, your fifth, or even your tenth year, mm -hmm. you can just grow a big hive belt sure. and make one split yep. or four queens yep. or as advanced as you want by turning this thing into a timing box yeah, with right. splits. Even over winter, I mean, you can make you got two nukes right. running over yeah. winter yeah. with the big hive, and yeah. they're all heating each other up over yeah. winter, and yeah. boom, you got, I instantly got two nukes. It'll pop right out of this and be ready to go. And so it's in one like, unit. It's yeah. easy to cut. It's you know, we talk about all these words: queen right and queen list and cell starter and cell finisher and nuke and split and time. These are all terms that you're thinking: is that this? Is that one of those? Like this is just the lighthouse side. The lighthouse side. And you, whatever you want to do in here, you can. Right. And then boom, here's how you do it. That's right. So it's fun to take your resources, put them in one box. Yeah. Allocate that for what you're doing, uh -huh. and then leave your other hives to do what you and else what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, make you some honey or whatever, you know, and, and then this is doing the right. other work that you're wanting to be and done. The, and the most important thing is we can show folks what we're doing yeah. right here. And yeah. look, 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 I mean, look how many folks we can easily get around this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can get three, four, five people looking in, checking this out. I mean, I'm, I am so excited. I, I cannot wait um, to get this back home for our folks to start learning off it. Yeah. Um, and if folks are interested in, in getting one for themselves, what do you think they should just call it the Lighthouse Hive and come see HorizontalBees.com? Yeah, just say, hey, I want one of them Lighthouse Hives that Greg, Greg yeah. designed, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely hook you up. And um, you know, and, and, and Greg's a great guy, folks. And if if, uh, if if you don't know him and you're on my YouTube YouTube channel, go check him out. I mean, I I come across one of his videos, and a guy was talking about how beekeeping. Uh, saved his life and the next thing I know I was hooked to his his uh, YouTube channel because uh, it, it's amazing to see what the Lord can do for you and can change your life even in keeping bees there, there's something special about bees I don't know if you know what it is but you feel a little more connected I don't know what it is but bees are a little more special to me there's something about these dang bees in the box <laughs> that are bring us all together yeah, yeah. and it, it helps us so many Mm -hmm. see the full uh, yeah. the fuller picture right. in life and what that means for us and it's yeah. awesome well greg i appreciate you thanks thank you so much for taking this yeah. on i know there's a lot of crazy ideas <laughs> how do we make all that happen but you guys knocked it out of the park yeah. and when i say you guys i mean your wife yeah my wife beautiful i love yeah, this yeah. i absolutely half of me wants to keep this in the in the, in the shop <laughs> uh, but the other half yeah. of me just wants to get it right out and get get folks learning on it so yeah. thanks again yeah that's, that's awesome. awesome we appreciate you greg thank you so much